could provide power for decades, but until now it's been too deep, too expensive to exploit. Billions of tons of coal still lie far beneath Britain, beyond the reach of conventional mining. But now new technology means power can be produced cheaply by burning it in situ, deep underground. Our business correspondent, Sarah Smith, has been to Swansea Bay, where the government has granted one of a number of licenses to develop the technology. But conservationists warn it could catastrophically undermine efforts to increase green energy sources. The bright lights of Swansea by night. It takes about 230 megawatts of electricity to keep the lights on in a city this size. There is enough coal beneath Swansea Bay to keep them on for decades, but until now it's not been possible to get at it. Underground coal gasification has the potential to transform the energy industry, especially in places like this where most of the old coal mines have long since shut down. There is still plenty of coal underneath the ground, it's just been too expensive until now to try and get it out. This new technology could completely change that. First, you sink a borehole down to the coal seam, about 500 metres underground. New directional drilling technology makes it easy to create another one that tracks along the coal seam. Pump in oxygen and firelight is to start a burn. And as the coal combusts, it generates carbon monoxide, methane and hydrogen, or syngas, which is extracted through the borehole. A power generation plant on the surface turns the syngas into electricity. Coal has always been king in South Wales, even if most of the pits like Deep Dufferin Colliery have long since shut down. There is still plenty of coal underground, but traditional mining methods can't reach it. Underground coal gasification is much cheaper than old-fashioned extraction, and men don't have to work underground in dirty and dangerous conditions. It's very cheap. It is a cheap form of energy. It's in abundance. It is security of supply. We own the coal in this country, not Brussels, not uh, America, not Russia. We own it, and it's our supply, and we have sufficient supplies of coal for underground coal gasification to provide energy for the whole of the UK, if that's what we want to do, for hundreds of years. Clean Coal's gasification geologist took me to see where their first project will start work in a few months' time. He thinks there may be a billion tonnes of coal under the water in Swansea Bay. What we try to uh, access is, is coal that's deemed unminable, and this is usually because it's too deep. So we, we don't, we're not really in competition with mines. What we're looking for typically are, are coal seams that, that aren't mineable because they may be offshore or because they're too deep. The government has quietly granted UCG licenses all over the country. Swansea is one of a number of them. Another's been issued on the Thames estuary, with another ten up the east coast of England. There are four offshore in Scotland, one in Cumbria and one in Liverpool Bay. That brings the total around the United Kingdom so far to 18. Environmentalists have always hoped that new advances in wind power, in wave and in solar would supply our future energy needs. But what's happening here is that new technological advances are also allowing people to extract and exploit more fossil fuels. UCG is cleaner than the coal of the past, but it will still produce carbon emissions. Clean Coal Limited say they intend to capture and store that CO2, but admit the technology is far from perfect. That because UCG is cheaper than renewables, it will displace greener fuels. The Earth's crust is riddled with fossil fuels, and it's not that we haven't got enough of them, we've got far too many of them. And this really is the climate change uh, concern. What are we going to do if people burn all this stuff, uh, given that it's going to be relatively cheap compared with some of the alternative low-carbon technologies? UCG is already in operation in Australia, where it suffered a major setback. Protests about local pollution forced Cougar Energy to shut down a plant in Queensland in 2009, when benzene was found in the groundwater, but the company deny that had anything to do with them. Coal is undoubtedly dirty and destructive, but it's also very cheap, and UCG could make it even cheaper. Around the world, there may be as much as five trillion tonnes of coal that can't be reached by traditional mining. Gasification might make it accessible, but it could also tie us to fossil fuels far into the future. Sarah Smith, Channel 4 News, Swansea. So, is burning coal underground the future? Indeed, is there a future at all for fossil fuels? 
Joining us now, Professor Michael Jacobs from the LSE's Grantham Research Institute on Climate Change. And joining us from Gateshead, Professor Paul Younger, Director of Newcastle University Institute on research, uh, of Research on Sustainability. Now, I mean, one thing is pretty clear, Michael Jacobs, and that is that the direction of travel is still fossil fuels. fuels. Everybody's using them. Everybody's simply trying to find cleaner ways to use them. But that's the future. Well, it isn't the future, and that's why I have got, and many people have, grave concerns about this technology of underground gasification. The world, as the report said, has plenty of fossil fuels, hundreds of years' worth. If all of them were burnt, we would commit ourselves to catastrophic climate change, temperature rises of 5 degrees, 6 degrees or more, which is more than the temperature difference between the Ice Age and the present day. It would make the world more or less uninhabitable as we know it. So if we burn all that coal... We, we would not survive in the way that we know now. We have to leave it in the ground. So any technology which makes coal cheaper and easier to use takes us in the wrong direction. Coal is not the future. Well, uh, that's the challenge you have to answer, um, Professor Younger. Well, it seems to me the national debate about energy has sort of devolved into a punch and duty show, which puts renewables on one side and fossil fuels on the other. And, I mean, the reality is we're going to need both, and we're going to need imaginative ways of, of getting fossil fuel use in a responsible way, re-injecting all of the CO2 arising, uh, so that you know, we can actually use the fossil fuels to bridge our way to a, a future renewably powered society, because we're a long way from that yet. Well, do you include this technology in, in that umbrella? Absolutely. I mean, the work that we've been doing for the, for the past five or six years is precisely about the fact that underground coal gasification can make carbon capture and storage not only economic, but up to 2,000 times easier to do in terms of the, the energy needed to do it. But if um, man so is adding, adding to CO2 emissions and global warming, as the majority of scientists argue, you're doing the same. No, you haven't listened to what I just said. We've been working on ways to use underground coal gasification precisely yeah, but to, to, use to it do at carbon all, capture but, and storage. But to How? use it at I all? Mean, if, you, if you're having the energy from the coal without putting the CO2 in the atmosphere, what you're doing is buying us some time to get renewables up to scratch. At the well, minute, well, not he's right then, isn't he? Scratch. I think the problems with this argument, the first is that if you inject the, coal, the, the carbon dioxide into the place where the coal has come from, you've only got room for about 30% of it. So you would still have coal being used with 70% of its emissions going out into the atmosphere. So that still makes it more polluting than gas. But much more importantly than that... Well, let, let's reason, pause there and let yeah. him answer I, that. I, let, let's hear your answer Well, yes, that. I mean, my, my background is in hydrogeomechanics, and I've done a lot of the modelling on this. You haven't just got the void space from the coal that you've removed to, to play with, but also the relaxed zone and the immediately overlying strata. And we know how this works from long-wall coal mining. So we, we've, we've a very long tradition, 100 years in this country, of, of safely managing um, underground coal operations with long-wall. And, and we know from uh, the modelling of those that we can get pretty much all of the CO2 back into the seam and, and the porosity you would access in the overlying strata. Well, that does sound pretty magical. The, in, the, the point is that this technology won't primarily be used in the UK. In the well, UK, well, let's just deal with it in the UK, because that's where the technology licences are being granted immediately. Yes, but the reason that companies are interested in doing this here is to develop a technology which can then be used elsewhere in the world. They're eyeing up the vast coal reserves in China and India and so on. And we know in those that places... The issue, surely, is the principle. No, are, you the, going no, the to, issue, are you going to support it in this country? The issue is, are we, creating, are we making it easier and cheaper for coal to be used around the world without carbon capture and storage. Let's not be, let's not be starry-eyed about this. There won't be carbon capture and storage in most of the places that this technology will be used. Companies are trying to invest in this because of its use overseas. Hmm. That is going to be the problem. We can't use this coal. We have to leave it Surely in the Surely the central problem, P Professor Younger, is that you are producing something out of coal which is cheaper and more polluting than green energy. Well... I mean, one of the issues about underground coal gasification is that one of the dumbest things you can do with it actually is to burn it to produce uh, electricity. I mean, the, the, the important use of it is as a precursor for all of the plastics and other things that modern society relies on, and that's what we're more interested in. And producing, you know, zero emission at point of use fuels such as hydrogen for electric vehicles, fuel cell powered cars, that, that's a, a far smarter thing to do with it. And if, if you couple all of that to 
carbon capture and storage. I don't see why the UK wouldn't want to be in the global vanguard of this industry instead of the usual business of the last few decades of bringing up the rear behind the legs of China and India. I mean, we, we have the technology. We can do it safely and cleanly and develop technology that others can use around the world, sure. Well, but if, if, if we've developed it to the highest standards, um, we, we've, you know, we've, we've set the bar for how this can be done. Okay. And it's a big opportunity here as well as a, a smart way of bridging to a renewable energy future. Professor Younger and Professor Jacobs, thank you both very much.